What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to take a look at the brand new 2020 Chevrolet Corvette Stingray C8. This is the all new mid-engine Corvette. Insane car already. Huge shout out and thank you to my friend Don for providing his personal car for today's video. I'll have his Instagram down below. Go give him a follow. Give him a thank you for letting us film his car. And then if you are interested in more content featuring the C8 Corvette, consider subscribing. My brother has one coming in just a few weeks, so definitely stay tuned for that. But anyway guys, let's get into the C8 Corvette. And the model that we're looking at today is an LT3, finished off in Sebring Orange, is equipped with a Z51 package, and has an MSRP at $85,000. Underneath the hood, this features the LT2 6.2 liter naturally aspirated eight cylinder engine. With the performance exhaust, this engine pumps out 495 horsepower and 470 pound-feet of torque. The engine is only paired to an eight speed dual clutch automatic transmission and sends the power to the rear wheels through an electronically controlled limited slip rear differential. And with a curb weight around 3,366 pounds, you're looking at zero to 60 at 2.9 seconds and a top speed at 194 miles an hour. And running off an 18 and a half gallon fuel tank, you're looking at 19 miles per gallon in the city and 27 out on the highway. The overall length is 182.3 inches with a wheelbase at 107.2. We get a width at 76.1 and a height at 48.6 inches. The Z51 package gives the Corvette an upgraded set of brakes. You get ventilated disc brakes all around with four piston brake calipers. The front rotors measure in at 13.3 inches with the rear slightly larger at 13.8 inches. And then this car also has a staggered set of wheels with 19s up front and 20s in the rear, finished off in a carbon flash black with a machined lip, all wrapped in a Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tire. The front end design with the C8 Corvette has quite a lot of similarities with the C7 previous generation vehicle. There's a lot of sharp angles all throughout, has a large opening in the front for maximum cooling to the front mounted radiators. The Z51 package also gives it a lower front splitter to add more aggression. Then there's large openings on each side with gloss black mesh with massive radiators located behind that. There's also two cameras mounted up front with more black trim around them. We have a sharp point in the center of the front bumper with the blacked out Chevrolet Corvette logo in the center. There's sharp lines from the bumper leading its way to this front hood and even have more lines going to the farther sides to give this a very wide appearance. And then we have LED headlights with LED daytime running lights in them as well. And the whole front end ties together to give this a ton of road presence and a ton of aggression. And then moving to the side profile, this has that classic wedge shape that you would expect on any mid-engine supercar. We have prominent body lines in the center of the vehicle as well as the lower portion of the doors to give a lot of contours within the car. You notice this huge carbon flash painted black side vent with a large opening underneath that for more cooling to the engine. The door handle is also located underneath that. And then we have the LED turn signal integrated into the side mirrors as well as more carbon flash trim around those. And you'll also notice that the passenger side mirror sticks out a few more inches comparing it to the driver's side just to improve visibility within the car. The removable roof panel on this car is finished off in the body colored. We have some cool contours within the roof and then we have a rear view camera that integrates to the rear view mirror. There's the Corvette logo within the top of the glass and then some heat extraction vents all around it. And then on the back side of the deck lid we have a blacked out Stingray badge, a carbon flash painted Z51 spoiler. And the overall side profile truly looks like an Italian supercar, very good proportions all around. The contrast from the body color as well as the carbon flash has a really cool look, really making the Corvette stand out. And then making our way to the rear end of the vehicle, you can see the wide hips at the rear fenders, giving it a nice wide appearance from the back. Then we have blacked out trim all around the three-dimensional taillights. They are LED and have sequential turn signals. There's a lot of depth to them. They look very aggressive. We have four parking sensors within the rear of the bumper and more carbon flash accents. You got the dual quad tip exhaust system finished off in the polished aluminum. And then you also get a lower diffuser underneath that. And then right in the center, we have the standard rear view backup camera and then a trunk release button for the rear hatch. So now we have the key fob, we're gonna take a look at the interior real quick. We have the lock and unlock as well as both trunk buttons on this. And then if I go ahead and just lock the car, double tap the engine start stop feature, and go ahead and fire it up. That has a very meaty sound to it. Definitely not bad for stock. Pressing it again, it'll go ahead and shut off. And then with the car locked, all I have to do is go up to it. Door handle's right here. And just with one press, it automatically unlocks and we can get a good view at the interior. Being the 3LT, this is the fully loaded interior. Every single surface will be covered in leather or suede. We have the gray and black two-tone, as well as the GT2 seats. If we go ahead and start with the door panel, we have black leather covering everything. Beautiful contrast stitching. We even have carpeting filling in here. Both trunk buttons are located right up here for the rear and the front. We have the release handle as well as your lock 
and unlock. And then we have the gray leather accents as well with the Bose audio system finished off with aluminum memory seat control right here. We have the carbon fiber interior package. You can see all of that automatic windows and then all the mirror controls. Then we have Stingray on the door sill right here. Moving inside to the seats, finished off in that same gray. We have a perforated design within the centers, nice aggressive bolsters. We have carbon fiber up top, as well as the Corvette logo embossed into the leather. This car is specked out with orange seat belts, which have a really cool look. And then flipping around to the two spoke squared off steering wheel, finished off in all black leather. We have the gray stitching as well, same with the airbag cover, and then some aluminum accents. And then now inside the C8 Corvette, keeping my foot on the brake, we can go ahead and fire it up. Starting off with the gauge cluster, it's a full digital display. We have audio controls over on the right side as well as your gas, your tack and gears in the center, and then more information over on the left side. In the center of the vehicle right here is your mode selector. There's an aluminum toggle, you just toggle left and right. So going to the right once, we're gonna go into touring mode. This is kind of the standard configuration. Over again, we're now into sport mode. The exhaust valve opens up, the tack gets a little bit more aggressive, and then one more bump over into track mode. Very aggressive design here with a very large tack. And then taking a look at the steering wheel, we have a Z button right here, which is kind of a configurable button that puts it into a certain mode that you can control. We have all the cruise control settings on the left side, as well as some favorites. And then on the right side down here, we have all the volume controls, more Bluetooth and audio controls up here with a heated steering wheel. And then using this icon right here, we can go through different things within the center screen. We can see different options within the car. We also have performance information. I can scroll down using the toggle. We have lap timer, G-force meter, and other things like that. So very nice how everything works on here. This does feature steering wheel mounted paddle shifters. They move with the wheel. They're finished off in aluminum, have a really nice look, very good feel to them as well. Over on the left side of the steering wheel, we have the heads up display system as well as an info button. And if we toggle that button right here, looking at the heads up, you can see different things with the speedometer as well as the park, what gear you're in. Now we have a different view right here, G-force meter as well. On the left side of the dash, we have an aluminum trim piece around the air vent, some more black leather and stitching carbon fiber around the gauge cluster and more black leather and stitching up top. A lot of very cool contours in here. Definitely gives us a premium and upscale feeling with more black leather and stitching along the dash with the two-tone accents. And then taking a look at the center screen, this is very similar to the General Motors screen. Just scrolling over, we can go into climate, see all of your climate controls right in the center here, which is really nice. We also have all the climate control over on the right side with driver up top, getting down to your zones, fan speeds, air conditioning, and then the passenger buttons are down below as well as the heated and ventilated seats. But going into here, it's very simple to use, super user friendly. We have the track performance data, which we can go into. You can see a lot of different things with the videos, the recording settings, then going back home. We have other information within the vehicle, pretty typical. We have navigation and then presets over there. Going into the cameras now, we have a top down view for the front. If we tap this button, we have a rear view, a more wide angle. Going here is back to the front. We have three different camera angles with the three quarters and the top down. We can turn guidelines on and off. We have traction control, the front end lift, and then your camera button. Just tapping that, it gets you back to this screen. And then tapping the front end lift, it only takes about three seconds. It'll raise it around 45 millimeters, and you can operate this until you get to about 25 miles an hour. And then on the left side, this is your gear selector. We have park up top, putting your foot on the brake and pulling this back, that goes into reverse. If we tap that for neutral, and then drive, we pull this up into drive, and we have a manual mode right there. And then even pulling both paddles at the same time, the car will go into neutral. And then taking a look at the center here, if we press this, we have two cup holders right in the center, all finished off in the same leather with some aluminum trim. And then taking a look at the center here, we have more black leather and the contrast stitching, a glove box right here with actually a pretty good amount of space. We have an SD card, USBs, and auxiliary. Closing that up, in the back we have a wireless phone charging port, and then a nice speaker that even has a Corvette logo in it. You can see that kind of within the mesh. We have a really good view out into the engine bay. Very nice to see that. And then you can see the gray leading its way to the ceiling. We have really nice stitching along the ceiling panel here. Definitely has a premium feeling to it. And then one thing very nice, if we pull down the sun visors, which are all finished off in suede, even this cover right here is finished off in the same material. So no cheap plastic in this car. Everything is covered, extremely high quality. We have OnStar controls up top. And then the rear view mirror is a normal mirror. Pulling that up, we have the LCD screen, which is that top mounted camera. And then as far as removing the roof, if you pull these down, you just pull these handles out. 
These will unlatch, and then you have one in the back side as well, pushing it forward in the back, and then pulling this back. We can easily pop off the roof, and it'll even fit nicely into the rear trunk storage space. It'll lock into place and stay secure, and you have a nice open top experience in your Corvette. And then to take a look at the glove box, it is a center button right here. It electronically opens up. You have quite a lot of space in here. And then one last look at the interior. Really good looking with all the black and the gray leather. And then with the top off, you can get a really good look at the overall interior. Car looks absolutely fantastic with the top up or down. And now we'll go ahead and close the door, take a look at the front storage space. Car looks so good with the top off. There's actually a hidden button right underneath the headlight. Just pressing this. The hood will actually pop open like that. We can lift this up, it reveals the front trunk storage space. And then just taking my camera bag to see what kind of space we're looking at here. This fits nicely in here with quite a lot of extra storage space. You can actually fit definitely two backpacks and maybe a duffel bag on top of that. Now you'll also notice with this mid-engine configuration, there is a rear trunk space and I did happen to bring a golf bag. We're gonna see if a golf bag can fit. I think that's a pretty good test that some owners might be interested to see. So as far as a mid-engine sports car goes, this definitely has a ton of space. So standard golf bag right here. So lifting it over the wing, we can nicely slide this into place. And that is a lot of space in there. As you can see, it fits very nicely. It's a full-size golf bag. I think if I put this more on the side, you can definitely fit two if you put it more on the side like that. So absolutely, you can fit two standard golf bags in the back of the Corvette. And then to close it all up, all you have to do, grab this handle. This does have a soft close feature. Once it's down, just give it a little click. It locks into place and automatically closes. All right guys, so we are now in the driver's seat of the all new 2020 Corvette C8. Honestly, sitting in here, I can't believe this is a Corvette. The fit and finish is insane. Every single thing is a high quality material. Leather everywhere, aluminum accents. This is genuinely an amazing car. So then to go foot on the brake, I guess we pull this back into drive. That is automatic. I believe we are in touring mode, so just normal conservative automatic mode. Already though, this is so nice feeling. It just, it feels like something special. It feels like a car that is three or four hundred thousand dollars, and yet this is 85 grand. That is a steal. So slow speed right now, filling out this dual clutch transmission. It is super smooth. I'm not feeling any jerkiness or hesitation. Just giving a little bit of gas, it accelerates. The gear change, I literally can't even feel anything. That is really impressive. Nice and quiet and comfortable. The steering is lightweight. It's very smooth and refined feeling. And you really feel like you're in like a race car, just the way the windshield is laid out. This A-pillar is a little bit closer to me than I'm used to in other cars. Kind of gives you that hunkered down appearance. And then the way this cockpit is designed, it's completely driver focused. And especially in my peripheral, seeing the black and then the gray, the gray kind of hugs me, goes right around me. And it feels like a fighter jet. It feels like no other car. As far as normal visibility, I love how I can see the fender arches. Gives it a really cool look out the front end. I can easily place the car if I were to be on the track or in the mountains or something like that. And then using these side view mirrors, they seem to do a pretty good job. Looking over your left shoulder, not too bad. Uh, right shoulder's not that bad either. But then it's really nice how we have this LCD screen and that literally takes away the blind spot. More mid-engine cars need to have something like that. That is just a really big plus. And then even just coming up to a stop, brakes do a really good job. Transmission, you just don't feel it. That is such a smooth transmission. And then if we toggle it into manual mode now, it tells you your gear up there. We'll go into sport mode. It's a little bit louder. We get the more aggressive tack up here. I can start feeling some bumps now. And the heads up display have the whole gauges and everything on there. Wow. That transmission is lightning quick. As soon as I let off the paddle, it's already into the gear. That is crazy. And we'll just go into track just to see that other tachometer now. So we have a very race car inspired one. We have tire pressure, oil temperature, pressures. Everything is a lot stiffer. Wow. The steering is genuinely heavy. I was talking with Don earlier about it. That is like, you have to actually muscle it. We're going in a straight line. And then just a few downshifts. We'll keep everything under 4,000. Braking mileage, of course, still going. I'll get like 150 miles on it. Wow. <laughs> Already just, it feels so solid. And I can't, oh man, I, <laughs> I'm speechless in this car. It feels like a supercar. And everything in track mode is so tight. That is crazy. So we'll tone everything way down into touring mode, comfort mode, and automatic mode. The whole car just kind of 
of relaxes now, and you can actually cruise. We're on a pretty bad road. It's very bumpy right here, but we're back into like a comfortable GT car, which is crazy. So back into manual because that is more fun, of course. But I just love how responsive everything feels. Taking a turn, you hear some engine. The handling is really good when you just turn a little bit. There is no body roll or any type of flex within the car. And you would think with a car that the roof comes off, that would lose structural rigidity. But obviously they designed this car to be a convertible from the beginning, which means you don't lose anything. It's completely designed for that. The center tunnel is structural in this car, so there's no flex. So we're going about 60 miles an hour and just accelerating a little bit in a turn. I mean, you can just pinpoint the car and I like how you do see those far fender arches, but then nothing right in the center. I just see the road. I almost feel like my feet are on the road. It's, it's weird to say that. I just feel like I am pinpointing the car wherever I want it to go, which is really cool. You're around 16 inches, something like that, farther forward than in the C7. And then because we don't have the engine up front, we have more of the weight in the rear. You just have a easier to pinpoint car because you're at the front of the car, which is super cool. And then just getting back up to speed. That transmission, wow. <laughs> That's just impressive how quickly everything shifts. But if we then tone everything down, just go into the normal comfortable modes, we'll uh, flip a U-turn right now. Normal driving even, it's very usable. If I hit the front end lift, it lifts up in three seconds. So right there, that was almost like an abrupt, you know, I had to get up on a steep hill. No issue, press the button and you're up just like that. We'll see what a three-point turn is. I think we're back in a touring mode. I mean, just navigating it, a turning circle seems super tight. Pull this back up for reverse. Huge camera, super HD. And while moving, I can easily adjust it to see a little bit different. My front down view as well. So definitely super usable. I do like how in reverse, you can feel the transmission kind of push you a little bit, which is pretty typical for a dual clutch. So I like that aspect. All right, so then getting back out, no issue there. And then looking around, you know, good enough visibility. So normal driving, and I wonder, so it automatically lowers at like 29 miles an hour. So front end is back and down now. But even normal driving comfort, I am so comfortable in these seats. They're hard and stiff like a performance seat should be, but I am so comfortable. They just fit your body. Like they go in line with your skeleton of your frame and just they fit really nicely. All the different adjustments, heated and ventilation. Now, one thing I want to talk about is the center column. Before, I hated it. I thought it was a horrible eyesore, but actually driving the car and using it, it's nothing bad at all. There are a lot of buttons, so it does take some getting used to just looking at it. It is a little confusing. But as far as separating the driver from the passenger, it's not intrusive. I did sit in the passenger seat and it's nothing bad at all. So I definitely have no complaints there. And then just using the buttons in the car, there actually aren't too many buttons. It's a pretty easy layout, even just tapping the home button. You have a lot of the controls here. I do like how you have climate on the navigation screen as well, just because sometimes this could get a little confusing. So if you're in a pinch, you can just have them right there, which is really smart of General Motors. It's very smart for them to do that. And then that's kind of the only button is just the three up there. You know, window controls, everything else is very normal. Um, the steering wheel using that, very simple to use all these buttons here, pretty typical in any normal car. Uh, like I said, the paddle shifters are really nice. They're large, they're aluminum. So depending on where you're gonna have your hands, I mean, you're gonna hit them. Now the nine and three position is a little bit lower than normal, I would say. You should maybe be more like here on a normal steering wheel. But quite honestly, I feel like this is still a comfortable, you know, good spot to have your hands. So I don't really have any complaints with that. Um, overall layout, I don't have any complaints. I'm not even kidding. Like, it's just so much, so much to offer with this car. We'll do a little bit more of a acceleration, keep it in manual mode. But I love the configuration within the gauges. I like how you have a lot of that important information. Man. acceleration than normal just kind of feeling some of the throttle the throttle response is super sharp everything is super sharp I am I am blown away and then being in track with suspension you can feel all the bumps going back down into touring mode the magnetic ride is so impressive how it's a completely different driving experience and it's only like an $1,800 option or something like that I would definitely recommend it in the car and then now just kind of comfortably chilling now I mean, this is a car you can cruise in. It's got all the cruise control, the safety features, the normal technology that any car of this price should absolutely have. And I mean, 
what can you complain about? Like seriously, what can you complain about? So then to finish it all up, the last thing I wanted to talk about, I think this car is a whole new era of sports cars. I think every single car company that makes a sports car, they have to look at this car and realize everybody needs to step it up. This car next to a $300,000 European exotic fits right in place, which is mind blowing to say that. And to look around and find the cut corners to say, well, how is it so much cheaper? I don't know where those cut corners are, quite honestly. I don't see where you're sacrificing, oh, it's a Corvette, it's cheaper because of this and the other thing. Zero to 60 is less than three seconds, nearly 200 mile an hour, more practical than the competitors. The fit and finish is perfect. Where are the cut corners in this car? I do not know. <laughs> and then when you look at cars that are this price range, they need to step it up too. So this car is gonna completely change how we look at sports cars and what sports cars are around because this is a complete game changer. It is, it's mind blowing. I'm so excited for my brother's car to get here. And even just driving this one now, still not even broken in, you can just tell this is above and beyond every other car. For 60 to 90 grand that these cars are going for, there is nothing better than this car. And I'm not trying to sound like a fanboy or whatever, but try to find something better for the money. It doesn't exist. So I think that is about gonna wrap it up for test driving and taking a full look at the all new 2020 mid-engine Corvette. It's unreal. It's awesome. I cannot wait to at least drive one broken in, especially when my brother gets his, actually rip on it a little bit. But definitely check out his Instagram down below. Give him a thank you for letting us take a look at it for the video. Yeah, that is it for the C8 Corvette. I don't know, it's it's the coolest car ever for the price. I, I'm almost speechless on it. But anyways, give the video a thumbs up, smash that subscribe button. I'll see you guys next video.